Okay, so in this one, what we want to do is uh, get rid of this hard code in here. I want to come up with a way of uh, having some kind of data object which will handle exception data for me. So that's what we're going to work on. Before we get uh, started on that, though, there's just one small change which I made behind the scenes just to keep the tests working, really, because uh, I know some people are forking the repo and uh, some of the tests might not be working. I don't like that to be happening on the main branch. So choose high definition for the best viewing experience. And if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. We made the change um, to our events and event dispatcher uh, for our after DTO created event. And so uh, the subscriber in there, we changed it uh, to use the service exception now because originally we were going to use a validation built-in validation failed exception. So all I've done is in tests unit DTO subscriber test, I've just updated the test validate DTO method. Uh, so you can just copy that there. And also if I've created a new uh, test called test event subscription. So that's just testing that uh, the event is actually being subscribed to. And so that's it really. Uh, now we can move on and make a start. Like I say, what I'd like to have is have an object which is responsible for producing this data and it'll um, produce different data depending on the circumstances. So in our example here, this is a validation failure. So it will produce this particular data which has a list of validation, uh, violations. But in other circumstances, you won't have that. And so it needs to be quite flexible and to be able to do different things. There is a particular design decision which I've made, and that is to simplify this a little bit. So the example from the API platform documentation showed that it had a title key and a description key. But I thought we're giving ourselves a little bit too much work to do there, so I've kept it quite simple. We're just going to have type, uh, and that will cover all kinds of exceptions. And then in the case of validation exceptions, we'll have this list of violations. So in reality, you would want that extra bit of information, title and description. Um, but it means we'll be putting in a lot of work for something which isn't really necessary. The purpose of this recording is really to show you how you can handle and bundle up the data which is needed to go back with uh, responses when an exception is thrown. So we don't have to cover the whole uh, A to Z, we can just cover a couple of keys here. Okay, talking out of the way, now we really are going to make a start. So we want some kind of data object which was, is going to handle uh, or is going to hold all the uh, information needed when we return an exception response. So inside of source, I'm going to put this in service. I'm going to create a new um, data class here, and I'll just call this service exception data. If you can think of a better name, then feel free to uh, add a comment or send me a PR. The way I'd like this to work is that I inject my service in in exception data into the constructor of the service exception, and then that exception can retrieve the service exception data and then call a method on it, which will produce uh, this array which we see here. So let's go over to our service exception and we'll create a constructor. Okay, so that might have scared you a bit there. We don't need all of this stuff. All we're going to inject into our constructor is a service data exception or service exception data. And that is going to hold a status code and a type. And we'll use that type for the message. So here I'm going to say status code equals exception data get status code and for message exception data get type and then I'm going to initialize a field or initialize a property called exception data so let's go over to our service exception data. Sorry if this feels like we're going backwards and forwards a little bit, but I just want to get us to a point where we can actually uh, reproduce and send back this in as few steps as possible. 
So service exception data for the constructor here, uh, it's going to be a status code. Okay, so I'm going to make this protected so that a child can inherit these properties because what I'm going to do is have this as the default. But if you want to go a bit more specific with the data that you're returning, for example, with uh, validation failures, then we'll have, still have access to these properties which I'm defining here. So protected integer status code. Protected string type. And then we'll create some getters and uh, getters only. So not getters and setters, just getters for each of those. I don't need the dot blocks here because we have self-documenting code. In order to be able to produce that array, we're just going to have a two array method here. This will return an array. And then I'm just going to go and cut this from our exception listener and return it here. Okay, back in our exception listener. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have exception data equals exception get and we need a method for get exception data. So let's go back to our service exception. Okay, so I've been able to auto generate that. We're going to return the get exception data. Okay, so you might have seen a little problem with this at the moment because we're making an assumption that this is always going to be a service exception and it might not always be a service exception. So it's a little bit happy path at the minute just to get things working, but we are going to make uh, a change later on where we'll check to see if this is an exception, uh, a service exception. And if it is, we'll handle it in the way that we are. If not, we'll add a little bit of extra handling for other circumstances. Okay, so exception data equals exception get exception data, and then we're going to call that exception to, or sorry, exception data to array. And so this isn't going to work yet. We need to remember where we've actually thrown that service exception, and that was in event subscriber. So here, what we're going to do now is create a validation exception data variable new service exception data status code will be 422 and the type will be constraint violation list and so here all we do is inject the validation exception data into the constructor so at the moment uh, we're just using our generic service exception data. Like I say, we are going to subclass this with something a little more specific uh, to the needs of validation exceptions. But this, I think, should work for now. We're creating our exception data. We're passing it into the service exception. We're now able to access that exception data here and call the to array method on it. If we go and have a look at this, we've actually hard-coded what is being returned. So we should see this. Like I say, we're going to actually remove title and description. And so this is what we should see. Let's go and give this a try in Postman. Okay, so it says we have an undefined method here, but we do have that method defined. Let's go and investigate a little bit more. And so the problem looks to be this. I'd actually forgot that I need to remove those. So when we're creating our parent construct in our service exception, we just need status code and message uh, because the other three uh, properties there, they have defaults, so we don't need to be passing anything. So let's go back and try Postman again. Okay, and so this time we get what we're looking for. It's returning our data in the format that we want it in. Obviously, this is hard-coded at the moment, so we need to go and do some more work on this. And our next move is really to subclass our service exception data uh, with a class which handles validation errors. So in the service, again, I'm going to create a new PHP class. 
I'll call this validation exception data. And so this will extend service exception data. And we'll need a constructor because here I want to pass in a, a constraint violation list, i.e. our violation, our validation errors. So status code type constraint violation list, and I'll just call this violations. I'm just going to remove these and set them on the parent instead. And I will initialize a field for violations. Okay, cool. First of all, let's just get this working as quickly as we can. So I'm going to go back to service exception data. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to simplify it here for the parent. So this is just returning a type. And so with that done, what I'm going to do is just make sure this is working by going back to the DTO subscriber. I'm going to change this for validation exception data. And so here as our third argument, we pass our errors variable because that is a constraint violation list. And so I think with this, I can actually go back to Postman and just check that it is still working. Okay, everything is still good there. Now let's go and handle those violations and we'll do this step by step. So we'll create a method here and we need to actually um, loop over those violations and sort of format it in the way that we see here. And I'll show you what we have access to as we go along. So I'm gonna create a method called getViolationsArray. And basically what I want that to do is to return this. And so for now, just to take things one step at a time, we'll go and cut that from there, drop it in there, and we'll just say violations is this, get violations array, which means that everything should still be working exactly the same. Let's run this. Okay, perfect. So now we need to figure out that logic. Let's start out by creating an empty violations array in which we can store everything. And then I'm going to loop over our violations. But just before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump them out just so that you can see them. And then we'll actually go back to Postman and run this. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've got here. So we have a, a constraint violation list, and then inside of there we have a violations array. And if you'll notice, we have a message, and we also have a property path on each of the violations, which is exactly what we are looking for here. And so how do we access those? So what we want to do is add each of these records to our violations array. We'll cut that from there. And then I can actually just say violation, get message. In fact, I want property path there, get property path. And there's one called get message, as you've just seen. Violation, get message. That means that I can delete this here and just return my violations array. In fact, I'll need to spell this correctly. Okay, good. So this time I think we should see uh, two violations. Let's go and run this. Okay, great. So we didn't send a request date. Let's go and have a look at our body. So we sent an empty request date and we sent a negative quantity. And if we look here, we get two violations, uh, one for quantity. This message, uh, sorry, this value should be positive, And we have one for request date. This value should not be blank. Okay, perfect. So now we have a custom system uh, of sending back the correct data 
for when we get validation exceptions. And so really to round off error handling, we need to uh, add to our exception list in here to handle other types of exceptions which haven't been thrown by us but have been thrown elsewhere in our application so they're not service exceptions because we're being a bit presumptuous here with our return and also we just need to go through our application and find places where there might be errors for example if we're trying to find a product here uh, using this ID we don't have any error handling for if a product could not be found. So little examples like that, we'll try and top and tail this off and that should complete our error handling. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. And also, if you're interested in my full length courses, then make sure you check out my site at garyclark.tech. I'll leave a link on the screen and in the description.